article was released yesterday by The Guardian with the headline, Zoe Sugg, the vlogger blamed for declining teenage literacy. And this article enraged us all as a community, content creators and viewers alike. How any author who releases books can be blamed for the decline of literacy, of reading and writing in teenagers, is completely beyond me. But not only that, the article itself didn't reference or elaborate on its own title. My friend Jodie Clark or Doddle Oddle on YouTube made a really good response video yesterday to that situation and some other situations that have been going on within our YouTube world, like the PewDiePie thing. And I wholeheartedly agree with everything that Dodie said, but I find YouTube and how it reacts and connects to the world around it and how the world around it connects and reacts to YouTube really, really fascinating. So I have a lot of thoughts on this topic. So I have comprised a very handy list. Why is it suddenly so bright this way? Is it, is it my laptop? Oh, uh, it might be my laptop. <laughs> Number one, the media generalise and we hate it. So we need to learn to not generalise if or when we respond. All female YouTubers are beauty gurus, all male YouTubers are gamers, all YouTube audiences are comprised of teenage girls, all YouTubers want is their audience's money. The reason everyone gets so het up about these articles when they arise is because it's mostly untrue, but we can't claim that it's all entirely false. Which brings me on to number two. It's so hard to admit that this wonderful, creative, intelligent community that we've grown has had in the past and still has somewhere lurking in its dark corners some bad apples, but if we don't accept that, it is so hard to fix. The first stage of recovery is acceptance and all that. Alex Day, Sam Pepper, V1i, and a few others unfortunately were accused of sexually abusing and emotionally manipulating certain members of their audience. They used the power bestowed upon them by us as a community and use it as no one ever should. That's just one example, albeit quite a severe one, of the flaws that we have within our community, but something that is always brought up within these articles when they do appear is money. This was something that Dodie got very upset about within her video, and rightly so, but it's the one point where we do have slightly different views. There are YouTubers now whose full-time job is YouTube, which is amazing. It is amazing that that is now becoming a career path because of us as a community. That's incredible. But when one singular person's livelihood depends on an audience watching their content, Money has to enter into the equation. That's simply just how a business is run. There's nothing sinister about that. People need money in order to live. And if someone's career is YouTube, that's just running a business. But as long as a balance remains between how much you care for your audience as individuals and how much integrity you have versus needing to make money in order to live, as long as there's a balance, everything's okay. But sadly, there have been, there are, and there will be people in every business that care more about the money they make than the audience that they're getting it from. The problem with YouTube is that it just feels a bit more personal because the YouTuber is sharing themselves. They are the product that the audience is buying into. So when they exploit an audience and get found out, it's crushing, it's really hurtful because it feels personal. Which is why it's so hard to accept. But it happens. And to claim that no YouTuber has does or will ever do that is generalizing. We are majoritively a group of caring, kind, positive, creative, brilliant, intelligent people, creators and viewers alike. But we aren't pure and we aren't saint-like, we make mistakes and we make bad decisions. And with every community, you know how they always say, oh, there's always one. We're a community on YouTube of billions, so there's definitely gonna be more than one asshole amongst us. Whilst it's so annoying and so enraging when a media outlet takes a positive and spins it into a negative, or takes one thing and puts it into a totally different context and blows it out of proportion, it's so annoying. But to say that the mainstream media should never highlight our mistakes or call out the people who do intentionally do wrong, 
could be really dangerous. For instance, a few years ago when the whole YouTube sexual abuse scandal was happening, us as a community were desperate for the mainstream media to report it because we needed the reach that they have and we wanted as many people to stand with us against sexual abuse. And we needed the mainstream media for that. Three, basically, all the mainstream media have learned to do is clickbait. They are playing us at our own game and we're completely falling for it. There's a reason that drama channels have as many subscribers and as many views as they do. It's because it's so easy to get angry. It's so easy to get riled up about something and sit in the comments seething about it with other people who are also seething about it. It's harder to ignore or take a less aggressive, actively hateful route. It's easy to tweet, as I did myself yesterday, when articles are written about how authors are responsible for the decline in teenage literacy. It's hard not to get annoyed at that stuff and it's easy to stick your middle fingers up and say, F you. But we already know how some media outlets like to take things out of context and we have seen firsthand just how easy it would be for them to cut around that F you and write a brand new headline. That's a slight extreme scenario, but We've seen it happen before, and we need to be clever and careful. The media that we're annoyed at already thinks that we're just silly little teenagers sat in our bedrooms pretending to be grown-ups. And the more we retaliate aggressively, the more they're entitled to sit back in their seats and say, see? We're so much better off treating articles like the one about Zoella yesterday like they're internet trolls, because that's exactly what it is. It's clickbait. It's to outrage us. It's shock factor so that they get more views. It had no provocation, and the article didn't even reference the headline. It was so transparent that it was just a stunt. And whilst it's annoying, Zoe's career is in no way damaged by that. However, when it's more of a PewDiePie case, it's a little bit different when a good, kind-hearted person is having his name dragged through the mud and he's being branded as a racist white supremacist because he made some very, very unfortunate, unclear jokes that didn't go down too well because he's not a comedian. Due to that, his entire career and reputation is at stake. That's when we can pull together as a community and call out that injustice. But even then, we're better off interfering in an intellectual, well thought out and well researched way because as soon as we start saying F you, we're disregarded as hysterical teenagers, even though most of us aren't teenagers, who are blindly following someone we put up on a pedestal as our internet messiah. Number four, now this is like my own little personal fear which I think a lot of people will disagree with, but I'm one of these people who likes to be cautious. We're at a point in our crazy, crazy world where the USA's president is waging a war against mainstream media because they are trying to tell the truth. Whilst the YouTube community is fighting a very different and much lesser battle, we run the risk of being tarred with the same brush as Trump if we call fake news every single time one of these crazy articles is written about a YouTuber. That's just one of my own little paranoid thoughts, but it's something to think about. Whilst YouTube is the way forward, the mainstream media still holds a lot of weight and integrity that we don't have right now. We need each other, and whilst we keep generalizing and demonizing the other party, the harder it is to move forward. It might be fun and edgy just to disregard traditional media as fuddy-duddies who don't understand us cool kids and some mainstream media outlets might find it trendy to disregard us as narcissistic millennials, but we have to cut it out. I don't propose ignoring articles that smear good people's names, but as a group of young people who have found a way to make a living off of something that most traditional media outlets don't quite understand just yet, we're very intimidating. And getting aggressive rather than clever just puts them on the defensive and they'll just put their fingers in their ears and go la, 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 la. I don't know what the solution is, but I do know that aggressively retaliating and biting back every single time something bad is said by the media about a YouTuber, it's A, going to take forever, and B, hasn't ever worked. We need to prove ourselves as the intelligent and creative pioneers of new media that we are. And the more we do that, the more it's in traditional media's interest to adapt and listen to us or they will just get left behind. Oh my God, my head hurts, I talk so much. <sighs> the wind is intense today. You're definitely gonna be able to hear it. So sorry about that, but 
As much as I'd love to, I cannot control the weather. 